it's lovely to be back with you all today. Um, I blame my colleague Sam for the change in um, <laughs> the change in title to a walk on the mild side. Um, we have about uh, 10 minutes, I think, today to just take an overview. And I'd like to talk to you about a test that we've developed at Accelerate called Extra Mild, um, which is an in vitro skin test for baby care products. Just trying to move the slides on. Oh, there we go. So if we just think for a moment on why we actually need um, a mildness test for baby care products, there are a number of different drivers and clearly the most important are the safety drivers. And we need to ensure, as um, Georgios just um, really effectively described to us, that ingredients and formulations used in baby care need to be targeted specifically to baby skin. And it's so important that we avoid any irritation potential to the skin and the eyes. Um, we need to maintain the pH balance of the skin, which in turn helps to ensure the integrity of the microbiome. Um, and also from a safety perspective, it's so important that we have in vitro methods to enable a pre-screen prior to any clinical studies. And this helps to de-risk any clinical studies that we're carrying out for baby products. There are also commercial drivers, of course, and companies want to have a rapid screen to inform their new product development or MPD process. Um, and in vitro tests also enable us to have that comparative information between multiple candidate formulations, whether that's a range of internal formulations under development to select which ones to take forward, or whether we want to compare to competitor or market leading benchmarks. I think also it's so important to meet those industry and regulator expectations. There've been a number of published studies um, such as this one that I've quoted from a fairly recent European round table meeting stating that liquid cleansers used in newborns should have documented evidence of their mildness to the skin and the eyes and in vitro tests can help to support that goal. So I'd just like to spend a few moments just to give you an overview of the extra mild test and how we developed it before I share some data. As a little bit of context, um, in vitro methods for skin irritation testing have been approved at a regulatory level now for um, probably coming up to 20 years or more. Um, this is the cross section of a 3D human reconstructed skin model called Epiderm, which is widely used for regulatory testing. And the model is composed of neonatal human keratinocytes. So we could postulate from that that it's a good model to be using um, to test baby care products. The model is suitable for testing both ingredients and finished products, which are applied directly to the surface of the tissue so we have an opportunity for a great model of real life exposure. Now the standard regulatory method, which is OECD test guideline 439, measures just one single exposure time. And then it tends, it, what it gives you as an output is a yes, no answer. So it's classifying those ingredients as an irritant or a non-irritant. And that test was developed primarily for hazard identification and labeling purposes and validated against historical animal data rather than human data using the old DRAES test. So it was very clear that in today's world where we're working with much milder ingredients for cosmetics, a test that was originally developed for much harsher chemicals wasn't really going to give us the data that we needed. So we wanted to develop a more sensitive approach. Now, one alternative to that test is the ET50 style of in vitro test, um, which measures cell damage over a time course. And instead of just giving you that yes, no, irritant, non-irritant answer, will allow you to classify as a severe, moderate, mild or minimal non-irritant. This still uses the same endpoint of measurement that is used in the regulatory test. So we know that there's a long track history 
of using this as an outcome when we're looking at skin irritation. Um, and this uses a metabolic dye known as MTT to measure the intracellular metabolic potential of the cells. And that's a really good indication of their health and of irritation potential. ET50 stands for effective time taken to cause 50% cell death in the skin models compared with untreated controls. And when we test a whole range of products, as you'll see in a few minutes, what this ET50 value allows us to do is to provide a rank order of irritation potential, again, in comparison with either in-house formulations or industry benchmarks. This graph just shows an ET50 calculation for the surfactant SLS. And you can see that we read off there um, from, the, um, from the axis, the point of 50% viability and read that across to give us the ET50 value in minutes or in hours. So we decided that we needed to make some further changes to the standard ET50 methods because we were finding that the standard method, which only goes up to 18 hours, wasn't necessarily differentiating between mild and ultra mild products. Um, as we've said, today's products are becoming increasingly mild and it's very important to be able to discern between those. So um, shown in pink on this slide, just in the interest of time, um, are the unique features of extra mild compared to the other ET50 style tests. So we've extended out the time period to obtain a 48 hour exposure to the ingredients or formulations. And we've also created a unique reference database using a benchmark ingredients and formulations. And this is really powerful because it now allows companies who are coming along with a brand new formulation or ingredient to test using extra mild and to see where that stacks up against the industry norms and the industry leaders. Um, also uniquely in this research project, we had a fantastic opportunity to carry out parallel human in vivo patch testing for some of the key ingredients and products. And we did that in collaboration with QTest, who are a clinical testing lab based in Cardiff. So that's just a background on the test. And what I'd like to do is just share with you some sample reference data to give you a flavor of what we can achieve when testing for mildness. So this is some reference data using a small set of baby shampoos. These are all industry leading products to provide that all important reference data. Clearly I've anonymized them for, um, for the purpose of sharing in the presentation. Um, and we can see from the graph that we obtained a range of ET50 values between four and a half and 15 hours. So this is the time it takes to cause 50% cell death in those um, form in, the, in the skin models when these formulations are applied to the surface. Now, what we can see here is that the third baby shampoo, which is shown in the, the bronze here, has the shortest ET50 time. And just to be clear, a shorter ET50 means more cell damage because it was able to cause 50% cell death within a shorter time. So that means that that um, formulation shown in bronze was actually the least mild. And then we're progressing through up to the green line, which was the mildest formulation that took 15 hours to cause that 50% um, cell death. So we can see that even between these um, market leading baby shampoos, there's quite a significant difference between the ET50 values. And now it, with any companies coming along proposing to test a new formulation, they can see where this will fit in. And this was a particular case study that we did with a close um, partner company. And again, this is baby shampoos, but they wanted to actually check out a couple of new formulations using their ultra mild surfactant blends. And um, so their new formulations were A and B, shown in the green and pink here. And you can see that the profile was incredibly comparable with the market leading formulation that we tested against, which was a great result for them and very reassuring in terms of the new formulations. We also tested as another benchmark, 
in this study, a mainstream adult shampoo, and actually was quite surprised at the level of irritation that we saw in that product. You can see the red line is causing a sharp decline in cell health, cell viability in those skin models with an ET50 value of only 1.65 hours, which is um, markedly less than we've seen with, it, with any of the baby formulations. Um, so I think on the one hand, it shows um, the importance of looking at the irritation potential of a wide range of formulations, but this method can really help to support the development of milder formulations for baby care. So just to go through a bit more um, with some different types of products, these were again some market leading baby washes to generate that reference data. Baby washes as well as baby shampoos of course contain a surfactant system and I think it's important to um, just keep in mind that any surfactant containing products are always going to cause some level of irritation. Um, biologically, just by nature of what they are designed to do, they're designed to, um, you know, to, to, to cleanse and to break down the cell walls of um, bacteria in many ways, which is why they're used in a lot of cleaning products, not only for the body, but also in, in household cleaning products, for example. So it's all about what is the blend of surfactants that we're going to use? That is all important for any baby care formulation, um, whether it's a shampoo or a wash. Um, and how can we actually maximize the use of new technology in these ultra mild surfactants that are now coming onto the market to make sure that we can provide baby washes that are milder than ever to use. But essentially you can see here that the range of ET50 values that we got was similar for baby washes as it would be for shampoos, which is what we would expect. By contrast, I just wanted to show um, some baby oils. Now, these clearly don't contain surfactants and you would expect them to be much milder to the skin. And sure enough, we didn't see um, the irritation potential of the leading baby oils that we tested. So they clearly have a very mild um, base oil that is being used. Any irritation coming from baby oils is most likely to come from any fragrances or preservatives that are added um, to that oil. But in this case, we had some really mild benchmarks. We've also tested baby sunscreens. And um, just in the interest of time, just to point out one observation from this graph, I would say that um, it was interesting to note that baby sunscreens with 50 plus SPF value were shown to have um, uh, more irritation potential, which is in line with the literature. I'm almost finished. I'm not sure if I need to wrap up in terms of time. Um, no, that's okay. fine. Just finish, finish your slides and we have a few questions for you. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think this is the last data. So baby lotions, again, um, you would expect to see less irritation potential than you would for things like the uh, baby shampoos and baby washes. And again, we saw a range of ET50 values in line with our expectations. And these, um, this data showed quite a big difference towards the latter um, incubation time between the green uh, baby lotion and the other brands. So this just to wrap up, I just wanted to demonstrate that there are different ways that we can present this data to be useful to companies. Um, this, uh, this is a series of ET50 values um, represented as a bar chart, and this can be particularly useful when um, evaluating your formulation against the reference database to see where it stacks up on that graph. The future work that we'd like to do, we'd like to expand the in vitro database to build the benchmarking capacity of the extra mile test. I mentioned that we were very fortunate to do some clinical studies using human in vitro, uh, sorry, human in vivo patch testing. And we'd like to do that more so that we can further develop our in vitro in vivo prediction model. We're currently doing a lot of data mining on the inky lists of the products. So I think that will give us all the more intelligence about the results that we're getting. 
And where we're not actually teasing out differences using the MTT as an endpoint, what we'd like to do is to do some further work looking at um, PCR as a technique to look at gene expression of inflammatory markers. Um, Georges was talking about the, the uh, barrier integrity, and we can also, also measure that in the in vitro model, and also to look at um, cell imaging to really see what's going on in the skin model. And ultimately, of course, we'd like to take advantage of um, new in vitro technology that's coming forward, combining microbiology with cell biology. There are now ways to introduce a microbiome onto the skin model. So we would be able to assess the effect of, of formulations on barrier integrity, as well as the microbiome, which is very exciting. Thank you very much to the following companies who have taken part in this work and to Innovate UK for funding it. Um, just quickly to say that if you're interested, there's also an equivalent um, test for eye mildness. And um, we're talking very much about skin today, but this technology can be applied to the eye. And thank you very much for listening. And thank you to our team at Accelerate, especially to Dr. Fiona Jacobs, who's played a leading role in this project. So thank you very much.